a comment real quick on on the the, the varying prices out there for for products and services. It, so you, you you manage that differently now than you did years ago. You know, one of the things that you know going through our pricing review and setting prices and understanding what we needed to um, you know needed to make to cover costs and to do the things for our employees that we want to do. Um, we, we, need to, we need to offer some consistency. So that was sort of the goal there is, you know, we're juggling vendors and, and pricing and, and, and just wildly moving, you know, things in the industry and, and things that we use. So um, I just, watching that happen and managing that again, differently than you did years before, you know, really looking at it closely and, and you know, do you purchase, do a bulk purchase now, where, whereas before you <laughs> just order, you know, incrementally. And, and you'd be okay and won't worry about it. So uh, I think that's important to, um, uh, you, you know, to be consistent for, you know, for our customer. But um, the la to answer your question, Cleo, the, it's the last minute stuff. It's the, uh, the things that come in, the, 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 the late changes. Um, though that's, that's where margin creep comes in because you're, you're reacting to it and, you know, to the point of the countertops, you know, it's, it's that last minute stuff where, well, do you really want to build a customer for it? You know, and, you know, is it something I should have been better prepared for? And, and, and could I have been? And gosh, it's such a big invoice to them and, and, and a small amount to me, you know, to, to react to that. But that's the creep, you know, and, and you do it once, you do it twice. And, you know, and maybe that's a, a bit in your price, you know, that, that you put out there to your customer. But, but that's it, it happens and it happens quickly and it adds up quickly. You know, and you find yourself in the throes of uh, of reacting when it comes to, you know, here getting a job ready or on the floor, you know, performing and, and you have deadlines for, you know, when the show opens and you just got to get it done, man. So if you're, you know, if you're, you, know, you got to document what you can and if you can get recoup some of that, but that's where that happens, you know, just simply reacting yeah. and going, I'm going to run to the closer store and buy the more expensive item because, I can save, you know, 30 minutes rather than go get the cheaper item and be, you know, within budget and, and on target. So anyway. Are yeah. you know are you noticing, yeah. Rich, um, a difference in so some of the supplier partners we rely on, maybe it's for flooring, maybe it's for graphics, maybe it's for whatever. Mm -hmm. But I mean, I, I think back just a few years ago, um, we could be amazing for people. I'm talking about same day turn on graphics in an emergency or um, a flooring shop that kept stuff in a non, uh, it's not their manufacturing city, but a service city like this, we could, we could swap out a color of carpet or whatever. Mm -hmm. And now um, if you don't have seven days to produce that graphic or, and, and the strange part is given what we've all been through with, with pandemic, you would think the brand side, the end user, clients would understand the need for more time would you agree it's if it's possible <laughs> lead times have gotten even shorter they're shorter right and so <laughs> for sure you don't have some um some suppliers that would be open on weekends in a trade show city are not anymore right they have their own struggle with laborers yep. so you know can you speak to how does that variable change on profitability are we are we saying no to people or we're still doing it and we're charging them more or we're doing it and we're eating it? Or what are you, are you? Well, I, I think, um, I mean, I, there's, there's times when we say no to something that's not a good fit for us or that we can't win on. That's know? on a, uh, that's on the start of a project. What okay. if we're in a project? Okay. Um, and these things. Well, there's some reality conversations you have along the way, you yeah. know, yeah. And, you know, here's what this costs. You, you know, communicate. It's funny. I, I just got off a conference call right before I walked in here. And and the bulk of it was communicating changes in costs and and, and really just dropping some reality bombs along the way of executing a project. And um, yeah, I, it's that that that's that's a struggle to, you know, to make sure that. Um, I think when I ran down the hall, I think yeah. I heard so delay of client providing something essential, yeah. we're no longer able to ship to the advanced warehouse. This now has to go direct to show. That means we're not setting up day one on straight time. It's going to be setting up on weekend overtime, right? It's going to be maybe some additional guys that are there. It's going to change the transportation freight cost because it doesn't have a 
the ability to stop in three places on its way up the East Coast. It's got to go directly there. All the domino effect is is real, mm-hmm. and and it's and it seems to be multiple um, in the current market. So to your point yeah. about communication, I think is is it fair as long as we're communicating real time? These are the consequences of these things yeah. happening. Um, the the customer, the partners, they're with us, and understanding of that versus not mentioning it yeah. and then trying to recoup it after the 100%. fact. 100%. You know? And and that's yeah. and communication has been I mean this isn't anything new. Yeah. It's just now now more than ever because the the reality bombs are a bit bigger. Yeah. You know what I mean? Uh so yeah, there's some real decisions to be made um sometimes. I, the, none of this yeah. is new Khalil to our listeners. Yeah. They all live in this yeah. world and we know that yeah. I I think if there's a, a takeaway it's are you really understanding what the cost consequences to your own company are if you're not yeah. Ad, you know, communicating and addressing these as it's happening. Right? Absolutely. I, I think it's a, always a good reminder too, because it's really easy from client to client to have a different perspective, you know, project to project to have a different perspective because, you know, you're in a different situation as a business or it's a specific event that you really want to do well at or whatever it is. And I think there's really three things based upon what you guys were saying that really stick out to me. And I think are, you know, warrant really highlighting. And one is that a lot of the times, it comes down to our own head trash that we're not willing to charge for the concession. We're not because we're worried about how it makes us look or how the client's going to feel. And we have this poor perspective of just the understanding that if you do something, you charge for it. No matter Are you writing this down? Okay, because I know you're (laughs) thinking of three people. I kind of felt like you were about to say that. (laughs) So I totally But I think it it comes down to head trash for, for, that's one thing, is that you've got to get out of your own head and you've got to just look at it objectively and not subjectively. The next thing that I think about that you said is that the process is so important and the process of billing is so important and just following that process will help you get out of some of these things where you allow margin creep to take over because it's a specific client or a specific use case or instance, whatever it is. But uh, with that process, sometimes it's important because we have terrible head trash to even remove ourselves from the process of billing the client as the project manager or the business owner, where if we can have, oh, I submit that to billing and then billing is the person that bills it or whatever, even just that simple act of removing ourselves to where our head trash can't be in the way of us doing the process that that can help us through it, right? And the the last thing you had mentioned, Rich, that even before the the process starts with the client where they have the opportunity, or before working with the client where they have the opportunity to change the work order or have a last minute request or a last minute submission to us, selecting the right project that we can win on, and even probably before that, selecting the right clients that fit our business model and what we're trying to achieve so that we have the right types of projects that we can win on is so important. And if you're dealing with margin creep consistently on every single job, it's either because you're not following a process, your head trash is getting in the way, or you're doing a really poor job of selecting the right clients and projects. Those are three things that I think every person listening can take to the bank on margin creep. And by the way, to your last one, that generates is another term we've just started using recently, and it's it's called scope creep, right? It's the scope of work that's constantly changing and evolving as it happens. Mm-hmm. And that has to do, to your point, Khalil, with the type of clients that you have. We all have, you know, customers that, you know, will make a change sometimes on a project and you do your best to respond to that. But when their process is that this thing is living and breathing and changing and evolving right up until the show opens through production, through delivery, through it. We really, it's the risk gets greater and greater, the risk of being able to deliver um, what they're looking for. And that's a a great event, a hassle-free experience. Um, we've, We've made a conscious decision that when we find somebody who regularly likes to do business that way, um, we've just, just decided we're not the right fit mm-hmm. and for that customer. I don't think they're the right fit for us. And we're okay saying that right now. And we're not snooty or, or stuck up. It's just um, everybody wants to feel good about what they're working on. They want the work to be meaningful and you want us to have some successes. And 
we're in a business that already, we always like to say, the world conspires to destroy the beautiful thing we build the minute it leaves our top. But we don't want to feel somebody's playing gotcha with us the whole time and then, you know, argues about who covers those costs. So, yeah, we're yeah. we're it's one of the reasons to your point. Choose better customers tends to bring better work, have yeah. better people, have defined processes. It really can protect you to have a profitable uh, gross margin, a profitable way of doing business. Right.